epic Stattle One speedruns of statistics. Brian Stevens versus Chapter Eight: Regression Wisdom. Begin. When it comes to understanding extrapolation, we have to know what it means. An extrapolation is when we make predictions outside the X bounds of the model. Extrapolation. This model goes as low as about 61 for the winds, and it goes as high as about 97 for the winds. So if we leave this, we are extrapolating outside the bounds of the model. Because this linear model created right here, this line, was created from the X values going from about 61 to 97, and we're not really certain if it has the same predictive power outside of this. It's important to note that you can extrapolate on the low side or the high side. It's simply when you leave the X bounds of the model. Now, sometimes you do have to extrapolate in statistics. We call this forecasting a lot of times. So maybe a company wants to predict what their sales will be next quarter. So they take their current data and forecast into the future. Maybe they'll forecast two quarters forward. So with this, they are extrapolating from what they currently know to make predictions into the future. So at times extrapolation can be valid, but we have to be very careful because we do not know how well this relationship for the model holds outside of the X values it was created. So oftentimes we don't want to extrapolate unless we're being very careful and using great statistics. When we talk about groups of residuals in a plot, let's look at an original plot right here and think about this. Notice how we kind of have this kind of points there kind of leapfrogging outside of it. You see a bunch of points above at the high side. So we're going to take that line, make it flat, and turn it into a residual plot. Remember those leapfrogging points above the line? Well, there they are again. So what you're looking for in a residual plot is anything unusual. You don't want to see any patterns, and I already see some. I see here that we see a change in strength that's getting weaker and a lot stronger. And the change in strength is noticed by the difference in the bands, the vertical spread of it. And so we see a change in strength. We might also have what appears to be some outliers down here. They're definitely pretty far away from the plot. So we've got some groups of outliers in the plot. Now, what does a good residual plot look like? A good residual plot, if we draw one down here, let's draw with the blue pen. A good residual plot is going to have the line going through the center of it, as all do at zero, and then we'd see the points kind of evenly spread out. No, uh, no issues with linearity, no issues with outliers, no plot thickening, and it's two quantitative variables that made this. Now, the original plot would have came from a line, and we would have made the line flat, and then the points going around it would look like this. They'd look evenly above and below, and then we'd just take that line and make it flat to turn it into a residual plot. But when we talk about this line, we need to know if this line is statistically significant. To know if the line is statistically significant, we are talking about the p-value. We're talking about the p-value of the slope right here. So we have the mileage example from before. And when you think about what it means for a line to be statistically significant, we're saying that we think the slope is not equal to zero. So a line that is statistically significant, we have evidence that the slope is not equal to zero. Where a line that is not statistically significant, we're saying the line could have a slope of zero. And while not all graphics would look like this, if you think about what these plots might look like, a slope that does not equal to zero or is not likely to be equal to zero due to the p-value is gonna look like this. And a slope where the line looks to be equal to zero is gonna look something like this. So let's put some p-values down below these. This one would probably have a p-value right here equal to a very high one because it's likely by random chance. And this one right here would have a very low p-value because it's unlikely due to random chance. So it's important we know when the line is statistically significant, we're talking about the slope right here. But how about lurking variables again? Lurking variables are going to be when we're talking about the relationship between two variables being due to a third variable. So some of my favorite examples which we've covered are the ideas of something like owning TVs and living longer. So how long you live is it due to owning TVs or is TVs controlling how long you live? And we don't want to say cause here. Cause is a bad word. We don't want to say correlation is causation. We might say, oh, we see people who live longer own more TVs. And someone might say, ah, I see people who own more TVs living longer. But in truth, there might be some sort of wealth variable right here that's lurking and wealth might be connected to how long you live and how many TVs you own. So this is the lurking variable example right here. There's also some classic examples we have. We use another one. 
with shark attacks and ice cream sales. We see here that when we see more shark attacks, we'll put sharks right here, we see more ice cream sales. But maybe both of these variables are connected to summer. That really during summer, there's more ice cream sales and during summer, there's more shark attacks. And thus we see kind of the connection between shark attacks and ice cream sale. So the lurking variable in this example would be summer. It's kind of the real variable behind here. When it comes to outliers and scatter plots, outliers can do absolutely anything. You can have here a scatter plot with absolutely no relationship. And then you put in one crazy extreme outlier and the relationship that is completely non-existent goes to a very strong relationship, a very positive slope of a line. Or you could have the same example here, and we have no relationship again between the points, and we have a flat line, which is not statistically significant. We put in a point down here, and now all of a sudden the line is negative. So if you notice, what's going on right here? Outliers can make a positive slope negative, a negative slope positive, a slope significant, a slope insignificant. Outliers can do absolutely anything. They could even take something that is a strong relationship. So let's draw a strong relationship right here like this. And then we put an outlier down here and what was a very strong kind of linear association now becomes a very weak or non-existent one due to an extreme outlier. So as you can see, these outliers and these plots can drastically change anything. And that's why we say Q, Q straight enough, no outliers plot does not thicken. And that's got it. Good luck on the test.